So this is a 2021 Porsche Macan GTS. Um, last model before the 22 refresh. So this is the last uh, model before that refresh. Um, it only has 9,700 miles on it. So very lightly used GTS. I'm guessing it's a lease. I'm guessing it was maybe <laughs> an extra car for the amount of miles that they put on it. But it's an awesome condition. So a few things that they built into this car that were options. Uh, first off is they had the side blade painted in body color. Usually this is black with red GTS on it. Um, if you didn't know that they took this side blade design, if you compare uh, it next to a Porsche 918, has the same design on a 918 in these two little design elements. There's several things that were taken from a 918 and put on the Macan because it was the first car that Porsche released after the 918 Spider. So um, I'm guessing they wanted to see or give it as much uh, appeal as possible to the public so it would be accepted. So they took some 918 styling cues out of it. The other thing that they took was this clamshell front hood uh, where it incorporates part of the front fender, same like a 918 at the time. This was like the largest single pressed piece of metal that Porsche produced. And also on the taillights, the original taillights of the Macan, how they were like just round little elements, 3D. They look just like the 918 uh, taillights. And then the last thing was the steering wheel. The 918 was the first car that came out with a special steering wheel. And so they carried that same design to uh, the latest Porsche Macan. Well, if that looks familiar, that was uh, the 918 steering wheel with its little mode selector on the 918. It had an E mode, so you could drive it in all electric mode. But this is the same steering wheel that's carried on over now to all Porsches since then, 2015. All the new models got this steering wheel, so every Porsche you get into looks exactly the same steering wheel wise, which I think is pretty slick. But as you can see, garnet red interior, 18-way seats, Bose stereo or Bose, however you like to pronounce it, it just looks brand new. As you can imagine with uh, 9,720 miles, uh, it just has the fabric headliner not doesn't have uh, the alcantara or race text as they call it a headliner but it has a panoramic roof system has auto dimming mirrors the garnet red gauge package as well heated and cooled front seats and heated rear seats but this car is in excellent condition paint is clear they had the exclusive design taillights that takes this piece from being red to clear, which I don't know. I think it would have looked cool in red. There was an option to paint these gloss black for the model designation, so they did that, as well as the roof rails, which are also an option on the GTS. So they had those gloss black and also the door handles. I don't know why people would opt to paint the door handles gloss black. I think why leave something more for more uh, fingerprints unless they just wanted to carry on the gloss black to everything else i get it surround view which is that satellite view when you're going in reverse so you can see the, what surrounds you and also the most expensive headlights that you can opt which are the pdls plus auto high beam in black which basically means these four light bar trim pieces and the trim piece on the inside are like a smoky gloss metallic black but very clean car let's take it for a drive so if someone were to ask what would you prefer a because this has the same horsepower as the refreshed macan s which one I'd prefer uh, of the two, uh, 375 horsepower 23 Macan S or a 21 GTS. And I think I would have to go with the 21 GTS all power 
um, being equal and the reason is because of this. This is the last year that the Macan had physical buttons on the center console here to operate your um, vehicle controls or, or vehicle options as well as your HVAC directionals and all that stuff. Uh, in the new car, this went to a flat pan or a flat uh, haptic touch screen, and I, I understand why they did it because it's a lot more economical when they're um, building the car to have options that they could just turn on via a computer program and it'll shows up as a light versus having to put in another physical button like this. So some people don't like that. I know it gets fingerprinty, like this black piano black here, which I guess they're trying to keep the whole theme of gloss black that's going on in the outside of the car as well. So I have the car in sport mode, in manual mode, so I can shift myself. And I did warm up the engine, so it's ready to go. Hello Tycon. And I also have the shocks in ultra stiff mode, and that's one thing I noticed between the current generation of GTS versus uh, this 21 is the dampening is a lot more track focused on the the newer GTS. Thank you for putting your signal on, buddy. Um, the GTS just gives you all the the oral experience that you want. I mean, this is uh, it's maybe a little bit more louder than the current generation S. But just everything is just a little tighter. Being uh, understandably the driver's uh, setup. But just such a fun SUV to drive. I always tell people if they're considering a Macan, they want a 911 or a 718, but they definitely need room. The GTS just really feels <laughs> like a sports car. As sports cars you can get for an SUV. stiffest mode with the shocks in sport mode. Uh, it's plenty compliant for daily driving. something to do with the with the flat six versus a v6 because you know it's just like shifts in a 911 but you always have the you know in a macan or any other other porsche unless it's just because of its audi heritage uh, audi slash volkswagen heritage they all have those shift farts when you shift
I appreciate when giving people test drives or demonstration drives in any Porsche model that a common comment that they make is that the car is very easy to drive fast. In other words, it feels like it is an extension of your body. A lot of cars that we get in that may have higher horsepower, they get scary when you get on the throttle. So uh, you, have to, you have to drive it to, to understand that once you get in it, it's very easy to become comfortable driving it. So let's go back and uh, talk about price. So the way pricing works with AutoNation is it's like on a CarMax type one price uh, fee structure um, or no haggle fee structure, I should say. And what they do is the, they have a computer system that just tracks all the car sales of the same car, mileage, similar options as close as they can. And they see what the cars are selling for on the open market. And that's how they price the cars. Uh, if you're familiar with automation window stickers, they have a QR code, not a listed price, because the price does fluctuate weekly. But it's a certified pre-owned car. Uh, that means it gives you another three years, or it gives you two years on top of the original manufacturer warranty. So since this is three years old, you have another three years of unlimited mile warranty for this Porsche. And as you can see, the car looks brand new. Um, uh, it's listed right now at 74,000 being April 24th. So if you want to come check it out, you come to Porsche Irvine or call us up and make an appointment and a salesman will help you out. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this where I list Porsches and also the cars that are traded in on them, uh, please do subscribe. Have a good one.